Having fished and filmed with Captain B.J. Sylvia many times over the years, I learned early on that a great day of fishing with B.J. all started with the preparation. With two buckets full of fresh green crabs and rods and reels rigged and ready to go, it was time to throttle up the 300 Yamaha and head out to a wreck where we would put the Hummingbird Solex electronics and the Minkota trolling motor to work. Over the years, BJ had become extremely passionate about tog fishing, and on the ride out, he shared how this all came to be. I started fishing with these things with my grandfather when I was six years old. I watched him catch double white chinners, double white chinners. I watched the species disappear to nothing. I watched it come back full circle, and I watched these fish get bigger and bigger and bigger every year. So you said you watch these fish disappear. It's important to you to let go of some of these big fish. Some yeah, of these big so we breeders. don't do that again, but what happened? They start spawning at supposedly 12 inches. Um, you can't keep them to 16. And in blackfish lifetime, that's a lot of years. It's, it's not it's, like a striped bass. One year later, they're at that size. Yeah, it's five, six, seven years, yeah. you know. Um, there's so many little fish now. Yeah. You have to fight through these little guys. And there's, if you go out and catch 30 keepers, you, you probably caught 50, 60 fish in order those to little, little 14 inch fish, you know, so. Which, which is a great is, sign, great yeah. sign for the future. You know, it's, it's funny, we're gonna fish a shipwreck today that I drove by in this bay my whole life. Never caught a fish on that shipwreck until I got a spot lock in it. Boy, we're right on the edge, like you said. Hey, Chris, you want to turn that off? That fish finder on right there? Well, one thing that these blackfish like is structure. And so if you can find structure, if you can find any kind of a wreck or rock piles or any kind of structure like that. Yep. All right, I'm gonna deploy this. We got a Minn Kota unit on the bow with a 72 inch shaft. What's that gonna allow us to do? That's gonna act as our anchor today. BJ's gonna go ahead and deploy that automatically and then using his Hummingbird unit in communication with a Minn Kota trolling motor, we're gonna be able to stay right on that spot using spot lock. And you can see sometimes it's even hard to get on these on these wrecks with a trolling motor. So you imagine how hard it would be to try to anchor on this? I, I'd be willing to bet that it would take you at least five anchor sets in order oh. for you to kind of get in the right position. All right, I'm gonna press this button right here. So I'm right on top of it right now. It's gonna take me a while to anchor. Take your time, and if it doesn't work here, we'll go and work another spot and come back to it later. Okay, we're done. So that's it. That's um, it. You can see. That was as long as it took my final of my freshman year of math class. It went over when I slept through it. This will come up to almost 40 feet though, so we're exactly right on top of it right now. But we want to make sure we see it on this part of the scan or else we're not, we're not on it. We got to be on top. Let's try to get a couple rods ready and we'll see what... All right. So here we're not going to jig. We're going to start off um, just with a basic simple rig. And the reason why we do this is because it's a shipwreck. We're gonna lose some, I'm sure. And one little hook, you know, right through, little ligament part right there. I like to make the little point come out a little bit. I think we're gonna stay this way. The tide usually runs north and south here, and wind's blowing west to east, so. How much water is it? I didn't see there. We're about, we're about 40 feet, 45. Now you like sitting it right on the bottom. Yep. So you're not feeling the weight. You're letting the weight sit on the bottom. Yeah. There's days I move it around a little bit, you know, but it's, I try to keep it as still as possible. But one of the things that I found, there he is. One of the things that I found over the years too is I like reeling down close to the water, which gives me a lot more room for that hook set to go up. Yeah, exactly. I might've dropped him. Ah, oh, no, he's still there. We're gonna have to weed through these little ones. That's okay. Beautiful fish. Really healthy fishery. A lot of fish in that size. Just hit the bottom. The more crabs that start chewing on it, it makes a noise. If you talk to divers, they say when they're down there, they can hear these things chewing on mussels. They said it's, it's loud as it can be. Really? Well, that attracts yeah, that, more that, talk. No, right. So, let me, uh, Chris, let me move up on it a little bit more. Okay. I'll go with green crabs for a while, and then if it's not working, what I like to do is like a double chocolate from Dunkin' Donuts. I'll even go jelly or Boston cream fill. 
I'll cut it in half, try to find the crusty section of the donut, and then I'll go ahead and put it through that. That oftentimes will work. All right, so guys, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna check the drags, drags quick here. I want the fish to be able to take a little bit, but if he swims us back down, I got him on the tighter side today. So we're either gonna, they, we're either gonna break off or they're gonna. Are you doing what in a traditional bottom fishing like this? You're dropping down, hitting the bottom. As soon as you hit it, giving it one crank up, just staying off the bottom. Nope, right on the bottom. Right on the bottom. So you so. are gonna be hooking up. If you're tog fishing and you're not hooking the bottom, hooking a little bit of structure, then you're not fishing in the right spot. That's right. So remember what I said? And here's the other thing, the faster you can start reeling, what a lot of guys like to do is they like to, at this spot there, they go like this. And they realize if he's hooked or not, that's way too late. So up and just already start cranking. And they start cranking, get on him. Ho oh, BJ just crossed to somebody's eyes. Little guy. But. And so it begins. So here we go, guys. That's the, our stocks are healthy. We got a lot of these fish. So all I'm gonna do is go ahead and let it down, hit the bottom. As soon as it hits the bottom, I'm gonna bring that back into the strike. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that fish was chewing and the captain was sleeping. So one of the, uh, one of the things about fishing the shipwrecks too is always feeling your leader after a little bit. Make sure you uh, keep checking your leaders and then you get to the old, well, can I get one more fish on it? Can I get one more fish yeah. on it? Oh, 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 a little tappy dappy. Then you break off a monster and the answer to that was, no, you shouldn't have got one No, more. that's the truth. Oh, yeah. oh man. Oh, she does. Oh, 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 he was asking for it. There you go. I wasn't really, I wasn't getting him off there for a second. So these tsunami rods, man, look at the look at the bend on them. Look how light these setups are. Well, that's the beauty behind how the tackle has really changed, BJ, over the years. He used to come on here and it used to be a broomstick. And nowadays, and you can have a lot of fun, even if the fish is still sm oh, small. Oh man, Beach. See what I'm doing there, guys? Is I'm trying to put a couple extra pounds on that fish. I'm gonna give him the first couple crabs, and then I'm gonna look at the mouth on these guys. So this is a little, this is a little fella. This is not what we're coming here with. This is what you were talking about. Real healthy stocks. We're gonna get him back in the water, real healthy. Oh, wow, man, they're hitting so good that I'm missing them. I mean, they just. Listen, I'm like a, I'm like a week behind on my hook set. Well, you know what it is, like you said earlier, you don't get a chance to do this. Well, no, you know, they've been hitting light the last couple trips. Sometimes you get these fronts and stuff that come through like this. Just turns them on. It just turns them on. When they're biting this aggressive, take a whole one like this, put it on like that, and what the guys do is come down and give it a little, give them a little squish to get the meat out of there. So Newport's becoming a destination for these fish. We've always had a great contingency of folks coming up here and fishing. The sea bass, the, the, the flounder and all of that, but this has really added another whole element over the years. Early season opportunity and then late season opportunity. And if it looks like we're setting, setting a little crazy, that's because we are. We're trying to hit them hard and get them out. So all I'm gonna do is just go ahead and drop it down. We're in about 40 feet of water, fishing really light tackle. I know the, you're, uh, you're a Daiwa guy, but I know also you do some work with uh, Tsunami as well. And these, these rods are all the Tsunami rods, the spiral wraps that are really fun. Yeah, they, they, they do a nice job. These, these are slow pitch rods and they, uh, they just, the other thing about the gear nowadays is you can fish all day, hold it in your hands and it's, man, the stuff years ago was heavy. Oh, you mother of pearl. They're hitting too, almost too good. They're almost hitting too good today. Something tells me I did another donation. The, the big ones will hit when they want to hit. You know, too, where, where sometimes these little ones will hit all the time. Whatever tide, it doesn't matter. They'll hit through the slacks. The big ones will hit when they want to hit. These things are hitting so well right now that I'll tell you what, you got to be right on as soon as it hits the bottom, you better be on it. You better be locked and loaded because it's hitting. 
Oh, oh, subtle, subtle bite that one. Okay, buddy. Let me know if you think he's a netter. Yeah, get him out of there. He got you back in. Yep. So loosen up. Let it sit? Yeah, try to get him. We gotta crank him out quicker. Yep, he's in there. You'll, you'll know if he's still there. Yesterday we got a couple of them out. It was funny, it was subtle, subtle, subtle. Like Stop. took in it. Because they the big ones are gonna eat the whole thing. Just try to reel quicker. The, the main thing is getting on the reel. Loosen, loosen it up one more time, see if he Yeah. I thought I had him. This boat. They can go inside this. Once they, so if they go in, these, that one's down in the engine room. <laughs> He's He's making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the galley. Next time it happens, I'm going down there with a knife. Check your leader, make sure it's all. Pretty good. See how long those leaders are? Yeah. All right, I see what this is gonna be like. <laughs> Gloves are off now. Gloves are off. So there's a couple of good things going on with this bay right now. It's the cleanest Narragansett Bay has been in over 150 years. And in my eyes, we have huge oyster farms over here. The oyster farms, to me, they're filter feeders. Um, so it's helping cleaning things up. It's helping cleaning, but what it is too, it's also habitat for small fish, where it's a place where these small fish can be safe. Oh, oh. You son of a... It seems like they're hitting the cut ones a little better right now. That's what we're trying to do is fatten them up. It's like oh, yeah, we don't want to catch them now. Don't want them now, we just feed them. Just keep feeding them. It's like one of our camera guys, Matty Doucette. We got a dozen donuts in there. We're going to fatten them up. Help yourself when you ever know you're hungry. You should eat a donut now because it's good luck when somebody eats a donut. It, that's, a true, that's a true statement. I only bring them because they're good luck. Okay. You want to grab me a Boston cream? Boston cream. Some of the smaller fish BJ is just pecking away, you know? So I think that's tied. Good luck doing it. Get out of there, get out of there. There you go, BJ, huh? You just put on a half? Yeah, it's a half. Whoa, there we go. Now you gotta check the teeth on this guy. Look at the size of the mouth on that, that fish. I mean, he's got a... Look at the teeth on there. We're gonna let this one live. He's a nice, nice big male. We'll let him get back in there. And uh, he might be a little bigger than. I think he's bigger than, 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 I haven't fished in so long, I don't know what they were. And he's off to the bottom. Now we're fishing a very traditional uh, Tatog rig. Just putting the lead weight down on the bottom with a three-way crab on there. To not have to anchor, you come out and you're, a, you're an old timer, you like to fish by yourself. When you fish by yourself, anchoring's a dangerous thing. Oh. His fish was smart. He ate my bait and put me in a rock. Oh, it's gonna leave a mark. Okay. Fella, this is where you get your eyes crossed. I think I might have said that once or twice today. Drag's too loose. So I had Dominic from uh, Backwater Jigs uh, make me up uh, a bunch of these jigs he sent up for the shoot. And uh, that white and orange color. They he, love it. Oh yeah. We boated one two days ago, almost 13 pounds, uh, on a tiny little rod with a jig. I can't imagine. I want a Dominic's here. Matter of fact, this jig right here. My green jig. BJ, you said you started fishing for these when you were six years old. Yeah. How, what have you noticed as far as like how this fish has really kind of climbed the ladder as a game fish compared to just being a bottom dweller that was there for eating? 
Yeah, the, everybody likes to eat them. You know, it's a good eating fish. But guys are realizing now that when you can start letting nine, 10, 11 pound fish go, you know, the goal, everybody's goal is to, like you said, a, a 20 pound tog, yeah. a high, you, you know, and people think they don't get that big around here. They absolutely do. Oh, you just popped me off, you rat. DJ, how long would this go for now, for, for, for the uh, fall? I can catch them inside the bay up until, I've got them up till probably mid-November. Um, usually around Halloween is, you know, I've, I've done pretty good with, with these togs. Um, I will catch them till most likely December, first week of December. I needed something to change my, my luck, because I am right now, I'm feeding them. There's a lot of healthy tog down there for the future, and that's part of the restoration program that BJ and I work on. Making sure they have proper crabs, making sure that they're solid and they're healthy and they can make the trip back out into the open ocean in the very near future. And I know a lot of my friends at home right now are going, that's a surprise, he's eating a donut. But. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky Donuts. There we go. Keep him coming, keep him coming. That's the one. Keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Yeah. Keep reeling, keep reeling, reel, 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 reel down. We joined Captain BJ Sylvia of Flippin' Out Charters for a day of late season togging in Narragansett Bay. And after having missed a couple of big fish, it was time to set the hook on a big trophy tog before the day was over. Here we go. Keep him coming. Keep him coming. That's the one. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Reel, 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 reel right. Keep that rod tip more out. There you go. I just had to get him off the rocks. Oh, okay. Oh. There we go. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be the donut. That's what we came here for. Look at that, huh? That's a gorgeous fish. I bet this guy, I'm not sure if he's got a couple of holes in his mouth or not, but <laughs> this fish right here, I swear to God, has been haunting me. Oh. I've had three take me into the rocks, and I don't even think that's the big guy. They're the other ones I like to let go because if they're Bingo. gonna, uh, how do you have double digits if you don't let eights and nines go? That's a gorgeous fish right there, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get that thing out. Let's get him back in the yeah. water. Oh, ho, ho. Lucky donut, buddy. Lucky donut. That's a nice fish. See, I'm fortunate enough, I've taken a couple guys out and they dove this spot. So I've learned a little bit of, about the boat. Really? Uh, did you see how many stripers are on this spot? So I can't tell on a big fish anymore because I sock my drag down. So usually an indication of a big fish is when he takes drag, but I'm done. I'm done giving these fish. Ooh. We're socked down, we locked and loaded. Locked. We are locked. Look at what the donut did. <laughs> the donut. <laughs> this guy's not big, but it... this is the difference between dialing it in and letting them eat away. All of a sudden, that's four fish in five. A nice uh, box fish. Let's uh, that's a beautiful box fish. Let's uh, we'll put this one in the, in the this guy's just in the bag of a, of a box fish. We'll bleed them out. This is braces, no braces. Another nice fish, BJ. You want a dinner table fish? Yes. Okay, we're gonna show you how we do this. First thing we do here with our dinner table fish around here. So you take him right here. So you gotta bleed him out right there in the water. Clip him. And boom. That'll pump the blood out more when the fish is alive. So it, it makes the meat really nice. It's 
what I'm doing, as you can tell from the tip of my rod to the water, I have about a foot of water there. And what that does is for a fish like that, it gives me a chance to really set. Of course, I should have done the drag again. Decent fish. Good fish? Not, I mean, not, not net-wise, but dinner-wise. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. So that's a tandem rig right there. So over the last couple of years, I've got some really nice tog. And one of the things I've been trying to do is really trying to fish spots that nobody's fished. And with the electronics, with the side scan, you will find humps that aren't on any chart. And I can go on a bottom. I can create my own bottom. That away, yeah, DJ. Yeah, here we go. Might need the net. Keep, let me get the net, BJ, coming. Oh yeah. I, I, I walked, took, took the dog for a walk. <laughs> I had to pick him up. <laughs> oh, that's a nice fish. Here we go. Here we go. Took the dog for a walk. <laughs> walked him up to the bow. <laughs> Look at that big white channer. I think you're telling a nice one to get a, a nice, uh, I mean, that thick, thick tail right like that. Beautiful tail, like you said, so powerful. This is one of the males right now. You can tell from underneath, you got the big chin starting to come in there. You know, the females will be a different color, as you said, more of a, almost like a calico color. Well, that was a nice, slow, right? Yeah. Take off. Cool. Took him for a walk. There's nothing quite as satisfying as hooking into and landing a big tatong. These powerful fish can be tough to catch and put up a fantastic fight making them a true sport fish. Like Captain Sylvia said, the more large blackfish we release, the more large blackfish there will be to catch in the future. With their stock in mind, this incredible fish will continue to grow as a worthy sport fish. Here at On The Water, we wanna bring you the best content possible across all platforms. If you'd like to see more, make sure to follow us on Facebook. Explore our Instagram page for a curated media feed. And subscribe to our expanding YouTube channel for the most up-to-date content only from On The Water.